So our next part in our pulley exercise is going to be this wheel right, right in here. There are a couple things about this that we're gonna to have to guess on, but it's really a pretty basic part. We have a circle that is four and a half inches in diameter, the outside diameter of the wheel. And then over here, we see that this little curvature, that's called out kind of, and it's saying that it needs to accommodate a half inch rope. So we're going to make it basically a half and an inch, you know, but maybe we'll, we'll change that a little bit. And then the width of it is not known. We don't see it anywhere in here, but we know that from this point to this point, this is two and a quarter inches. We know that these, I believe we made them a quarter inch. So we can kind of guess on that. We figure out the middle here um, with a little extra tolerance. You can see right on the edge there. So let's come over here and uh, take a look at what's going on. Most of this is, is pretty simple. So we'll right click on this and say define a work object. We make a cylinder. We start with the cylinder, cylinder and notice it's centered. The next thing up here is the pocket and that's simply the hole going through the middle of it. No problem right there. And the last thing is the groove. Okay, so that might not have been the way that you were thinking about making this, but we use the groove tool to make this shape right here and also uh, it, it should be note, noted that typically I would say to make this a sharp corner and then add this at a fillet, as a fillet later. And I think that that's still a pretty good idea, but it uh, gives me a little bit more chance to, to look at creating corners or um, you know arcs. And then as you can see right here, there's a construction line, which is the circle. Uh, which you could use for the basis of the, um, you know, the, 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 the rope that goes in there possibly. Okay, so a little bit different way to go about doing it. Maybe not the way that, that uh, I would design this sketch in real life, maybe. And then the groove, if you forgot, is the item that will take an object and spin it around. So let's go ahead and get started on this. We'll pick a plane which remember, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because we're going to um, assemble this later. Click on the background, we'll start with a circle, get it right smack in there, and then uh, dimension this 4.5, 4.5, exit out. Now, what are we gonna do with this for the thickness? Well, I can come over here and I can tell you what I did for the thickness here is it's, uh, so an inch and a half wide completely, but you see I've got it mirrored on either side here. And so an inch and a half, if you look back at our drawing over here, I'm just figuring that we've got um, two and three quarter, or one and three quarters by the time we subtract the quarter inch of this thickness here, take off a little bit more for the gap was good enough. But the biggest point here was that I made it 0.75 and remember, if, if you forgot this, a quick way to do this is let this do the math for you. So if you know you're gonna pad it just one direction on one side, let's see, let's preview that. So it's just gonna go like this, but I, I sorry, I want it mirrored on both sides of the plane. Come in here and say 1.5 divided by two, and then just tab away and it will solve it for you, you see? So there's half of the main thickness, and then you hit this button and it'll mirror on both sides. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and do that. Pad, same thing I just did right here. Exactly the same thing I just did, divided by two. Tab away, it gets the right value. Hit this, now it's even across that center plane. And let's open this up so you can see what's going on. Then the next feature is the hole. Now the hole you could make right here on the surface, but I feel like maybe a good habit to maintain, you know, your symmetry here is to pick that plane in the center. You think about this, you deal with it how, how, how you feel is appropriate. I'm gonna put a circle in the center right there, get right on the middle there, and I will constrain this to 0.75. Again, I'm not worried about fitment tolerances uh, for the most part here. So we know that the, the peg that's gonna go through this later is going to be 0.75 and this hole is 0.75, so we would have to add a little bit of extra, you know, a bit of a gap to this. Now, this one here, it's a dimension. We're gonna change it up to last, so that will pocket all the way through, but I have to go to the second limit here. You can't say up to last and do symmetry. It doesn't work that way. You have to do up to last one way and then up to last the other direction as well. Hit okay, and there's the hole going through. And now the last part is find your flat plane in here so we can look at it like this, vertical up, 
and now we have to draw that shape right there. But in order to do that, I'm going to need some construction geometry. So if I turn this off to the side like so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this circle. And I haven't exactly got to explain this yet. It's a little bit confusing. Maybe it's not. But from my plane that I'm on right now, look at the grid. See the grid? I'm running right through the middle of the part. Projections go to your plane. So we've seen a lot of projections where we're on the face, you know, like I was on this face and we projected the circle and don't see much. Early on, I made a projection uh, to a plane that was out in space and we actually saw it project, you know, move across to the other side. When you have a plane that cuts through like this, it's still all the same process, but it's going to take this circle and it's going to smash it on to my plane, which in this particular case, if I were to look at it head on, it's going to look just like it looks now. That circle from my direction looks like a straight line, and that's what we're going to end up getting. So I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to pick the other one, and I'm going to project this forward, click on the background, and there's our yellow lines, okay, or, you know, the projected lines. Great. Now I'm going to pick on each one of these, and I'm gonna turn them into construction elements because I do not want to use them for solid geometry. Understand that, how that works. I'll flatten this out, and now that I have the two side lines, I can get, I can make my own line that goes across here. There's another, uh, there's another projection tool called an intersect that you could use to get this line right there, but I'm not gonna do that. I just got the sides real easy, and it's, and it's not hard to just grab a line and go here and bring it from side to side. Before I make the line, I'm gonna turn on construction elements so that it will be a construction element when I draw it. Okay, click on the background. If you do it this way, the construction element down here, remember that it's a toggle. So I did it, I clicked on the background and then turn it off. Okay, little, little sidebar piece of information. If you click on something and you look down here, it will show you what it is because it the toggle is in. Click on the background, it's not on. If I had a solid line over here, I'd click it, this would remain as it is. If I pick on this one right here, it tells me that it's a construction element. Here's my point. If I were to pick on that and say, okay, the next thing I don't want to be a construction element, so you come down here and you turn that off, you just turn this back into a standard element. So remember that that's how it works. That's why I'm always saying click here, do this, so it's a construction, you can't tell, but it's a construction. Click on the background and then turn that off. Okay, so remember those steps. Now, I need to draw the shape that goes here. I have a line that I can anchor stuff to. So I'm going to draw basically a triangle. So I get right here on this line, just anywhere on here. Bring it up to this, this, this uh, uh, the center line right here, the vertical line, snap to that, and then bring it down here. There is a little bit of an edge, which is why I'm not going right to the point right here. Bring this back over here, get the dot, connect it, there's my triangle. Now to go back over to the pulley, just to show you, see this right here? There's a little bit of a flat edge on it, so that's what I'm doing right now. Now, um, before I start dimensioning, uh, probably always, I don't know if you have to make it a rule or not, but I'll do my ge uh, geometrical constraints first, meaning I will pick my constraint tool, and then I will pick this point right there, and I'll get that point right there, I get a dimension, right click, remember this, allow symmetry line, so I pick that, and then come up here and pick the yellow line right there, see it wants some other stuff, but make sure you get that yellow vertical line, and now when I move this back and forth, uh, they're they're mirrored, they're symmetrical to each other. And also, if you look right here on the sides, that's the mirror icon. Okay, dimensioning. Well, uh, the length of this right here, let's do that. So I could say the length of the triangle in its entirety, but I think in this particular case, it'd be easier to go from this point to that point and call this point zero 0.05. So we just get, uh, you know, so now we're defining again, communicating to ourself or other people in the future, that edge is 50 thousandths of an inch. So, so that's, that's what we're saying there, as opposed to measuring this, and then maybe that's a little bit more confusing. All right, now the next thing we could do, could do is we can come up here and we can make a corner. We will make a corner here. But um, I'll, I'll bring it down wherever. So I, I used the corner tool again that we've used uh, previously, and I created this. And now I have this, this element that comes out here that is a radius. Um, it's, it's fine. It's fine. And, and you could look at this and go, okay, well, it's a radius. 
the drawing says that a half inch uh, rope is going to go through this pulley. So this as a radius needs to be 0.25 and I can change it to that. But in the same lines of uh, you know communication, communicating to yourself and others in the future, if I make this 0.25, maybe it doesn't jump out to somebody that it needs to be 0.25 because that's the, 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 the radius of the half inch rope that would be laying into it. So another way to do this or a, an, an add on to this is I can grab a circle here and I'm gonna put it right here in the center. I'm gonna make a circle right there. And this is also mainly a reason to talk about construction elements again, because there's a myriad of different ways that we could do this. I'm gonna turn on construction element and I'm gonna snap it right to the center there and bring this out. If you see it snapping to other things, trying to make a constraint, don't let it do that. Hold down shift and now it won't snap to stuff. So I'll make it about that big. So I've got a circle that is a construction element. I come over here to this, I pick it, and I go to constraint, and I make this 0.5. So now I have a half inch circle right there that I know the rope is going to fit in. What I want to do is make this arc right here the same as this, and I can't do that while the radius is here. So I'm going to pick the radius and hit delete to get rid of it. And then I'm going to go to constraint, so I'm picking my constraint, and I pick that arc and this circle, right click, say tangency, and now it makes that arc the same as that circle. So you see, it's really the same thing, but this one maybe communicates the information better. And like I said, I mainly did this for another reason to use construction elements and um, geometrical constraints like tangencies. Now, the last thing to do is I need to figure out how deep this is going to go. So I'm going to pick constraints again. I could go from the center here to down here. You know, that could work. But I think for the depth, the way we think of depth is, is this edge right here to this down here. And so I get that complete, you know, the depth of this groove. So I could click on here. And that's 0 0.9. I think, I think maybe 0.75 is probably a little bit better. We'll check it out. I don't remember what I put here. Uh, well, it's easy enough to take a peek, right? Go here and 0.7, I made it, okay? No biggie. That part is a guess because in the drawing, we don't see this anywhere. If you were the person doing the engineering behind this, I can absolutely see that um, people that are in the know about pulleys, that if you make this stuff uh, too shallow, then it's more apt for the rope to jump out of the wheel and kind of get caught in the corner. So, you know, there's engineering and everything, right? I'll leave it at 0.75 and I will exit out of here and I will go to the groove tool and the profile isn't selected so make sure you recognize that so I pick the sketch the profile and then the, the axes it could be um, you know the axes running through here it could be the axes of that it could be the axes of this in this case it doesn't matter so I'm going to pick the edge of the inside circle you could easily come out here and pick the side of that Right. Hopefully you understand, by the way, everything that I'm talking about right now. It's picking the axes that runs through the center of this cylinder that you're choosing. 360 degrees, hit OK, and there we go. So that that is it. I would probably say give it a color like we've been doing. And uh, right here, and we'll make it kind of a light yellow and give it a name up here and save it. When you name it, when you name it, here's the thing to talk about. If you look up here on my tabs, hanging pulley, pulley roller, even though it's just a roller, because of the way that we're using um, um, 3D Experience to search for things, if we're working on a lab, if the lab has a very obvious name, make every single part include that name in the, the, the part. So it's pulley roller, pulley bolt, uh, pulley hanger, pulley case. So if you go to search for pulley, you're going to see all of that. It could easily be a, a model number or something like that that you, you connect to it, possibly. Okay. A lot of conversation on just even that topic.